Thank you, you sir. You are one of the most experienced executives here with a range of uh, board positions. What is your take on investment in data centers over the next year? So I think, I think it's going to be quite interesting to see how um, the investment community evolves because first of all, AI is driving a tremendous amount of incremental demand. Right? But everything else is still going, but AI is adding to it in a big way very, very quickly. And yet at the same time, the cost of capital is going up, right? And the yields are coming down. So historically, where you know the, the more traditional private equity yields of 20 plus percent were the norm, you're not going to find that anymore. So you're going to you're going to see pension funds, um, sovereign wealth funds, those sorts of people going to be quite happy with single digit yields, um, but they're they're less experienced in doing so. So it's going to be interesting to see how these two sort of groups of funding come together. How do you think AI uh, will impact in the short term? Well, we're already seeing it. The, um, the hyperscalers are even shifting their, their orders that they've already placed for cloud platforms. They're actually mixing that up with AI and cloud now so that they can get on the board as soon as possible with, with the AI game. And for a data center company, the, the difference is effectively you're more than doubling the power consumption within the same footprint. So where you would normally have X number of kilowatts per square meter or X number of kilowatts per cabinet, you now need more than double that if it's going to be AI application rather than simply cloud. So already we're seeing the impact straight away with, without even waiting for new orders to come in because of AI. And then the second thing is, of course, the, they're now re, reapplying the original orders to, fill, to backfill where the cloud infrastructure goes. Mm. Have you or anyone you know been thinking about the cost of this, not the financial cost, but the environmental cost and maybe the cost to societies we are doing things there there's there's new new ways of, of trying to deal with prov provision of power um, green energy there's the there's the ability to sort of be more efficient around cooling cooling to the chip as opposed to big environments like that so that all that is you know it, it takes a long time to, to to change the direction of the industry because of it's sort of a turning a Titanic but the other part of it I think your question there was you know what is AI going to do to society itself and I'm, I'm in the sort of positive camp thinking about AI, right? Because I think that um, like, like all technology, like every invention that humankind has ever had, it's not the invention that, that, it, that defines whether something is used for good or bad, it's people, right? So you can put a gun on the, on the table here, it'll be here 100 years, won't do anyone any harm, except someone picks it up and does something with it. So it's, AI will be certainly um, a tool for good and bad. And what we need to do is get the regulation around the, the bad side of it. Where do you see new opportunities in these markets? Gosh, it's everywhere. The, the, the opportunities are so great. You've got every single person right now can use a, AI literally today on your phone. You can pick up the phone and, and have an enriched search from Google using Bard behind the scenes, or you can ask ChatGPT to write you your next script. And so, you know, the, the opportunities to enhance our lives and make all of us better are literally a phone way. It's your gig. Thank you, you very much.